Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today in another webinar by Instantly. My name is Julio from the Instantly team, and here I have AJ Casada, a very dear partner of ours. How are you today, AJ? Doing good, man. It's good to be back. Yeah, thank you so much. Where are you joining us today from? Are you still in uh, Southeast Asia? Yeah, still in Southeast Asia in uh, Vietnam, actually. What time is it there? Oh, it's too late, man. You don't want to know. It's midnight. <laughs> Get to oh. the end of the day. It's always the same with you. Like you're always like doing late hours, just burning the midnight oil. It's very impressive. Like you keep growing, keep growing your business. Like I don't know where you get that energy. But anyways, let's jump in straight into it. So basically, today we're gonna dissect uh, AJ's um, three-part framework. So basically, he has a framework that he has used to help other agencies add an extra 10k to 30k a month, um, and he wanted to share it with you guys. Um, but before we start, like, how about you maybe do a quick intro to those who still don't know you? Um, like, how do you start? And yeah, how do you end up doing cold email? Yeah, absolutely. So um, my background is I actually started in sales uh, and believe it or not, door-to-door -door sales, right? So we used to actually have to go like in person to get leads rather than do all this online stuff. But I dropped out of college when I was 18 because I knew I just really wanted to go into business. I figured the first thing I would, you know, I should learn is sales. So I applied for a sales job. And um, worked for a construction company doing door to door sales. Ended up being really, really good at it. I found a knack for sales and I dropped out of school to just go full time. And it was really cool because I got to really grow within this company, see how a business was run. You know, they were like a multi eight figure construction company. And I got to really manage a whole territory, manage a few states, and manage a sales team of 20 people when I was only like 21 years old. Um, so that was my first like foray into lead gen. I didn't know it was really called lead gen, but uh, that was what I was doing. I was doing like cold outreach in person. Uh, but I didn't want to do that forever. I also really was excited by the whole idea of like working online, working remote, having a team remote. I always wanted to travel, which is, you know, why I'm here in, in Vietnam now. So after five years of growing within that company, I left to start my own agency uh, and we did performance marketing. So Facebook and Google ads, but it was performance marketing. So clients would just pay us for lead. So we'd have some clients even paying us like 10, 20 a month for leads. It was really profitable because they didn't pay us a retainer. There was no risk uh, and they would place big orders where, we would just charge them like 50 bucks a lead, but generate the lead for, you know, 20 bucks on Facebook and, and make the difference. And it allowed us to work with some really big companies. Uh, and then through that, my most recent business is Revenue Boost, where uh, we actually help agencies build their agency using cold email, LinkedIn, and our sales strategies. So after I built my agency, I realized that a lot of other agency owners struggle to get clients. They struggle to get leads, struggle to get calls, struggle to close deals. For me, it was never that hard because I worked a corporate career in sales, so I knew kind of what to do. But I realized how many other people needed help like getting clients for their agency. So I started a consulting business and now we help other agencies, you know, build their sales process, build their lead gen and, and all of that. And uh, that's how we how we got here. And fun fact is I have three dogs. So my house is always a mess. <laughs> nice. Love it. Um, that's that's super interesting. Like, like it, it never amazes me to hear your story because, um, yeah, it, it's just fantastic. And how many clients do you currently have? Because we had a conversation before in the past. And I think you had like 30, 40 clients, like how, how high is that number now? Yeah. So we've had, uh, served 90 clients now with the revenue boost. So yeah, it's cool Ooh. to see, I guess the, uh, the journey, right. It must've been almost a year ago. <laughs> I was last on your guys' YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it, was, yeah we... it was, it was last year. So yeah, it, 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 it always impresses me when I speak to people and they're like, yeah, we just doubled or we just triple our numbers. So I think yeah. you're, you're practicing what you preach. Like you're, you help agencies double, triple the month of revenue. And there you go. You have just doubled yours as well. So love it. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. So guys, we'll be answering your questions live. I'm, I'm already seeing some questions. We'll jump into trend in, in just one second. Um, we're just going to dissect this um, methodology from AJ and then we'll jump to your questions. But make sure um, to ask your questions live in the chat, whether you are on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn or YouTube. Um, this is all going to be for free. So it's a great chance rather than having to pay a hand, like hundreds of dollars to a guru to tell you um, how to scale your business, you can just get it all for free right now. So it's a great opportunity. So AJ, how about um, we start with um, the three-part uh, methodology? So you mentioned to me that it consists of niche, offer, and copy. Which subject would you like to start with? Yeah, so let's start with just an introduce, introduction to why we're even talking about niche, offer, and copy, right? Because I think... Um, you know, I feel like when it comes to, so obviously a lot of people come to the YouTube channel to learn about cold email, right? And, uh, you know, I think out of everyone who's, you know, there's people that are crushing with cold email, booking five, 10 calls a day, people that are still struggling to really get their first few sales calls in, right? Um, but what I've noticed is, you know, a lot of people that are struggling or really good at, really good at cold email, 
they all understand the tech, they all understand the tool, they all understand the process, the tactics. So it's not really that that makes a difference. Like it definitely helps a lot. Like when you use a great tool, like instantly, it's just so much easier to get campaigns launched. It saves you a lot of time, right? Um, but what really creates the difference between huge success and like struggling to get leads and get clients is really your niche and your offer and your message, right? Um, I'm so passionate about this because again, I think everyone's always obsessed with like tactics, like what's the latest script or like what's the best like feature I could try in the tool. Um, and again, all these things help, right? But if we obsess over the tactics, they only make little differences, right? Um, they help, they help here and there, but if you really want to make a dramatic shift, you really need to step back and look at the bigger picture. Like, what am I selling? What's my offer? Who am I selling it to? What's my niche? And what's the messaging, which is the why, like, why should they, should they buy it? Right. You know, what are the pain points? What are the results? Um, so I would like to give this analogy where it's like, okay, imagine you're playing basketball. Imagine, imagine I was going to give you a thousand dollars to win a game of basketball and you can play against two people. And I had Michael Jordan there, a professional athlete, and I also had like a five-year-old kid. And I said, okay, who do you want to play to, to win the game of basketball? You would obviously choose, like, which one? Oh, Michael, Michael, of course, yeah. No, 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 if you were going to play, so you had to beat them. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, LeBron James, I don't know. Just someone really good. No, no, so basically the idea is you're going to either play a little kid or you're going to play Michael Jordan and oh. you're going to, and you have to beat them. Who would you choose, right? Okay. I'm really sorry. I got it all wrong. So obviously, <laughs> obviously I'll pick the kid. Obviously, obviously. Sorry. I, I thought it meant like, yeah, um, I was going to say, which... you must be really confident in your basketball skills. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I understood like, who would you choose to play with as a, as a team member? So yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So who would you play against? And yeah, the answer is obvious, right? You would play against yeah. the kid because it's just an easier game to play. So yeah. this is what entrepreneurship is about. This is what, you know, the importance of niche and offer because it's about playing a game that's easier to play. So a lot of times, you know, people are trying all these tactics, all these different tools to get ahead uh, and just trying to make things, you know, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. But really, maybe if you just change and you play a different game, you serve a different market, you sell a different offer, or you make some changes to your offer, you can be playing a game that's a lot easier to win, right? So it's not yeah. just about playing the game better and improving your skills here and there. It's about stepping back to see like, okay, how can I play in a game that's just easier to win, right? Yeah. Um, so sometimes you can just like, I have, I have clients where they've switched their market to a different niche. They've worked with all these different clients and I'm like, hey, why don't you focus on this one market? They just make only that change, nothing else changes. And then they just blow up and start getting so many deals, right? So yeah. this is where you can get some really big wins when you, when you just kind of step back and look at the bigger picture of what you're doing. So that's that's why we're talking about it, but yeah. Yeah, I think that's that makes a lot of sense, at least from what we've seen from data, because we analyze a lot of camp or for campaigns and also we try to see like what is working for our clients. And one thing we notice is that consistency is king. And I think it aligns with what you just mentioned. Um, like, for example, um, you know, like I think you just you just nailed it with that one because like you can find ways to like sort of like hack your way through results, but it's just not going to be sustainable. And then when we analyze our best performing users, basically the ones who are consistently with sending volumes and they're just consistent overall. You know, they they know that um, in order to get results, it just takes hard work and just be every day like doing the same thing, improving that process, of course, but not trying to find shortcuts. That's when people start getting the results. So I guess um, eventually, the, the and, I, and I think like it shows today, right? Like that kid, like if we're talking the basketball analogy, the, the, that kid will eventually beat um, Michael Jordan or LeBron James eventually if he practices enough and consistently every single day because at one point just Michael Jordan will get old and will, he's not going to be so fit. Whereas the kid, if he's consistent, he might one day just beat them. So, um, yeah, it, it, I guess it applies also in basketball. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Um, so, okay. So how about you tell me, like, let's let's talk about some real um, case studies. Um, so... Do you have in mind any examples of of someone that, for example, just had a terrible copy that, let's say, came to you and they were like, you know, this is my current copy and obviously we don't have to give names or anything. But like, what are those elements that you immediately um, detect time and time from from your clients when they come to you that they could do better? Like, what are those things that um, every single time you dissect their copy, you're like... This, this is like the number one, the, the top three things that you see in mm -hmm. clients making some mistake. Yeah, so going into the copy side of the three of the three elements, I'd say the biggest thing, the biggest thing I say is people are too much talking about themselves and not talking about the prospect, right? So an example would be a lot of cold emails is like, hey, my name is this, I'm from this company, we do this, and do you want to learn more, right? 
And everyone's email sounds like that. It's very much a use focus where you want to flip the script and be um, be focused on them, right? So, and that an example is that could be something like, "Hey, you know, I noticed you have this problem. We've helped a couple of companies like you get this result. Would you want to hear how we did it?" Right? So, the people care about their problems, their priorities, the the results they're looking for. They don't really care about you and your company, not at first, at least, right? Once once they know you can help them, then they want to know who you are. Most people, they're talking too much about like themselves when they need to be talking about the other person and their problems and the results they're looking for. So yeah. if you haven't really gotten clear on the problem you're solving and the the results that your prospect's looking for, and I don't just mean like the benefit, I mean really the end result. Like after someone uses your service, how does their life change a few months down the line, right? Think about your happiest clients after they were done working with you, how did their business get better? You really got to be thinking about that end outcome and the problem you solve and leading with that and getting, getting into it in the first like 10 seconds. So another mistake I see is emails are just way too long, right? Um, so if you have an email that's three to five sentences, it's just going to get through so much quicker because most people, you know this, right? Most people read their emails on their phone, right? It's on mobile. So when you have this long email, people have to scroll. The second thing that happens is when people see a really long email, first of all, they usually just assume it's a, it's a sales pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So they could just delete it. Or if they do actually read it, they usually skim it, right? Because people, when they're in their email inbox, you always have to think like, what's happening for the prospect when they're reading your marketing message, right? When you're, when your prospect's reading a cold email from you, they're looking at like 30 other emails in a busy morning and they're trying to just get through it. Right. So they're not going to take the time to read your like long crafted sales pitch. Right. They are usually skim it and you don't want someone skimming your message because then they only pick apart like different things. Right. They don't really see like you put every word there for a reason to serve a purpose or to build value. Right. So you want them to read the whole message when, a, when an email is like three or four sentences, they'll just read the whole thing because their eyes can't help it. Right. Uh, and yeah. then you go kind of lead them down that path you want psychologically to for them to go through, right? Rather than giving this long thing and maybe they skim it or they look to see like what the what the call to action is or whatever. So keep it really short. Um, get to the problem or the result like right away. And um, yeah, those are the two biggest things. I think the third yeah third thing would be it should be, it should feel conversational. So again, when someone sends you a really long outreach message, it, it doesn't feel conversational. It feels almost yeah. like I'm talking at you, right? It's almost like if you were to go up to like someone at a party and you just start talking to them for like ever and tell them about who you are and why you're like great, they'd be like, they'd be like, get away from me. Right? They wouldn't want to like talk to you. So a conversation is two ways. Like you say something quick, the other person says something. And when they're emailing their, when your prospect's actually using their email inbox for like talking to their coworkers or talking to their clients or whatever, they're just having these really quick emails, right? So yep. when you have this really long message, it stands out as the sales page. Whereas if you send a quick message, a quick note, that's very conversationally written, it just feels more like what they're used to seeing in their inbox, right? And it kind of you know flies more under the radar. So it should be conversational. A good tip is when you write your email template, read it out loud. Because if you read it out loud, you'll see if it sounds like weird or awkward. I find the same thing. So if I have an email template or any kind of copy and I read it out loud, it'll feel like awkward. If I, It'll feel like, okay, I wouldn't say this to someone in person, right? I wouldn't say this to a friend. Um, so if you read it out loud, but it sounds really smooth and natural and like something you would say to someone in real life, then you know that it's going to read really well and it's going to, and that's what makes them feel human, right? Because when yep. your copy is really conversational and it has a very like natural tone, it feels really human to the person. They can kind of connect with you and feel like they're more talking to a person, right? Rather than they're, they're talking to like, you know, like you're just, there's just someone on a big list that, that you've emailed, right? So those are the three things with copy. And then beyond that, like the big mistake I see is people aren't clear in their niche or they don't mm -hmm. really have an attractive offer, which are the next two points we, we can talk into. But if you're not, if you're not clear in your niche or your offer, it's really hard to write good copy because you can't really, get specific right but anyways yeah. i'll stop there yeah no, i think that makes a lot of sense i mean honestly like one factor for success that we have noticed is um just always focusing on call email as a way to mimic human-like conversations so um a lot of people they they assume that okay i'm gonna blast a lot of people and i'm just gonna add my calendar link and people are gonna click on it and i'm gonna get a bunch of sales um but they are just missing the point like the whole purpose behind email is the same as whatsapp it's the same as most of communication channels which is to communicate with other individuals and then the moment you make it sound or feel like it's an automated message then people will automatically like in their heads like categorize it as just another mass message and and either they, they, they delete it straight away or just like you said like just read it like super quickly like probably spend two seconds just analyzing what it's all about and if it makes sense to them but the, I think the moment you start making it feel like a human-like experience because of the copy yeah. being short 
and just um as you said like just r r crafting the message in a way that it just feels personal the, the 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 recipient might spend more time reading it and i i also been like so i also get a lot of call emails right like uh everyone yeah. does like who, who doesn't right um and and i actually i've been wanting to do this for a while like um maybe we could do it one day um but basically just analyzing call emails that we are receiving and just seeing stuff that kind of like makes sense and stuff that doesn't um but but yeah like i will say that most of call emails i receive they just miss the point like they are not generating a human like conversations mm -hmm. interactions they are asking for a lot and they're not giving enough like they're not yeah. delivering any value whatsoever um and then on top of it like they want to take the most precious thing i have which is time they're like let's meet and i'm like look if I will spend 30 minutes, I will already spend it with my wife having coffee or playing with my daughter in the park. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, or, or generating more money. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's very straightforward. So, it, 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 yeah, I think like people should keep all those factors in mind. But, but there were two other points that you wanted to mention. Um, I don't know if you want to add. Anything. Yeah, definitely the, the niche and offer. Well, first, I just really wanted, I think what you said is really smart about like how, yeah, they're, they're asking for a lot without giving anything, right? Um, and, you know, yeah, I mean, even though a, a call or a consultation, it's free, right? They don't have to pay for it. They still are paying for it with time, which they usually value more, right? At the end of the day, we're all selling to business owners. Business owners are busy making money, right? So why would they take time out of making money to meet with you? They have, there has to be a really good reason for it. Um, but yeah, I love the example about that. And also it's just like WhatsApp or Messenger, right? It's like if you, the more you can think about email as, as if you would just think about communications you'd have with a friend or colleague, the better, right? So I definitely love that. I love that example. Um, but yes, the other two is niche off niche and offer, right? So if you can remember NOM, I would call it the non framework niche offer a message. These three things are the single reason why your cold emails or any marketing campaign will succeed or flop. So we talked about the message, getting to the point quick, copy. Um, the other two are niche and offer. So the niche is really important because you know what I found is if you're selling to everyone, you're selling to no one, right? Like when you when you sell the when you sell the same offer to a lot of different markets. Uh, or you're selling a lot of different services, you can't really get specific in the copy. You can't really, make, you can't give specific examples. You can't give specific case studies. You can't give specific pain points and problems because when you're really broad in who you're targeting, you, you have to basically like only say generic things that apply to everyone, right? Which means there's nothing that compelling about your message. So the more niche down you are, the more you specialize in your business on who you're, who you're selling to, the more you can really, really get to know that market and what are their pains, what are their objections? What are the outcomes they're looking for, right? Um, and then just everything, is, it's just much easier to write really, really good copy or, and everything gets easier. Selling them gets easier because they hop on the phone with you. They've seen that you've helped 20 other people just like them. They have a lot of trust, right? Fulfillment gets easier because if you will keep fulfilling for the same type of client, you get really good at it, right? Rather than having to build processes for all these different niches and all these different like services you're selling. Um, so everything in the easier is just everything in the new business is just easier to to grow and scale when you're really specialized in the focus because you only have to get good at helping like one type of person right like business is already complicated enough why would we complicate it further by having like 20 different markets we have to try to cater to and appease right um yeah. so yeah i'm a big believer in, in niching down and niching down isn't just about picking an industry a niche is really any i guess grouping of, of characteristics right so it could be geography it could be companies with certain characteristics, right? Um, it could be companies at different stages, like startups first, you know, six figures or solo printers or, you know, eight figure businesses or four to 500. Um, so there's a niche can be any kind of just common, common trait. Yeah, that, that is a fantastic point, actually, because I, I've noticed that a lot of people, when they're starting itching down, the only thing they consider is the industry. And, and, and I have to, I have to agree on that one. Like, for example, um, I've seen some really good success um, cases, like for example, where someone will literally take the same offer and just bring it to another market where English is not a predominant language. Like you're you're right now in Southeast Asia. I'm sure that yeah. there are many business ideas that you could bring there and adapt them to the local language and you could succeed with that. And I've totally, seen yeah. it happening time over time. Um, so I'm originally from South America. Same thing, like you just take a business idea that work, used to work 10 years ago and all of a sudden you just translate to spanish and it starts working i've seen it also in the french market in so many other... so basically you haven't changed 
the buyer persona, I mean, in terms of like the position, maybe you're targeting the same CEOs, same company size. All you did just change the geography. And because of that language barrier, uh, that product or service never entered the market and you're just the first one to enter it. Um, so yeah, or you could just play around with, like with industries or positions, but I think there's so many factors you can play around with um, that if you do it right, like you could get good results, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, it's that easy, like the niche is the easy one to change, right? Um, so I'll give you an example. One of our clients who he had a digital agency and he was offering a lot of different services to a lot of different people. And, um, you know, we had him really focus on niching down, but the way he niched down was he tested different niches through Colina. And this is so cool because instantly makes it so easy to A-B test, right? So you can use instantly not just to A-B test copy, but to A-B test niches. So if you're starting a new business or you don't know who your best clients are, you know, then you can just take the five niches you're considering, send the same email template to all of them, right? Just change the niche. And then you can see over time, like who gets the most response, right? As an example. Yeah. So it was really easy to figure this out if you just put your mind to it. And then after he had, he had figured out that business consultants were the best niche for him, like business consultants in the US were just the easiest for him to find and close. And then he shut off all the other campaigns, just focus on selling to business consultants, really dialed in the copy because he could really speak to like their industry and their terminology. And then, he, you know, last time I talked to him, he's booking five calls a day, 25 sales calls a week, Ooh. just for cold email. Nice. Um, that, that, so that's the power. That's a fantastic approach, I have to say. Like just, um, and, and honestly, we recommend a very similar approach. Like just test, um, launch simultaneous campaigns, test, 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 and just go all in. It's like, it's like in poker. You go all in with what's working, but you first obviously need to measure what's working or not. And I think that's the beauty of call email in a way that it can accelerate that um, finding process, that discovery process of which one is the right niche, which one is the right buyer persona. And, and you can just contact thousands in just a matter of days. And yeah, and that way you can just like make a very informed decisions rather than just lots of companies, they just fail because they burn cash for months thinking that yeah. they know who should be the right client. Mm -hmm. um, but instead, like you can save yourself, like not, not only you can generate a lot of money, but you can save yourself a lot of money by just um, confirming if your company, if your, if your entire company is built accordingly, if your approach is the right one. So yeah, that's a, that's a great way of doing it. Um, mm -hmm. So when it, when it comes to um, the offer, right? Like I, I like your, so I still remember this one. So on our last um, live, you mentioned don't try to sell meat to a vegan. And I love that one. I've used it a couple of times on other lives as well, because it's just so clear. Um, yeah. And and we all have, you know, like a vegan friend or relative and and we know how harsh that can be offering, you know, meat to a vegan. There is no chance they will buy it. Um, even if it's the best meat, even if it was one penny, it's about for them to buy it, they wouldn't buy it, right? Even even if you have the, exactly, if it's the best offer ever, if you ever bring meat to the vegan, he's not going to buy it. So what are some of those recommendations that you will have to people in order to shape their offer accordingly and find success? Because what we realize is that offer is probably the strongest factor for success. So how can someone um, shape the right offer, build the right offer? Um, maybe they already have a product and they already have an offer, but they're not getting the right results. How do you help them shape that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so first we have to understand what a really, what an offer is. So there's a difference between an offer and a service, right? So if you're offering website development, that's not an offer. That's a service, right? The service is what you're providing to them. Uh, an offer could be like what, how you package the website development, the result it gets, right? Um, let's say it's like, oh, I re I'll redevelop your website to give you a new brand identity and help you increase conversions 20% or something like that. Right. You want to go that direction with it. Right. So, um, have to understand that, you know, just your service is not your offer. You need to really like make it sexier than that. Right. And so first we have to understand what goes into an offer. The way I define an offer is it's a, it's a complete solution to an important problem that gives the prospect you know, a, a, a significant outcome, meaning I'm solving something, I'm solving a problem. That's a really important problem. I'm solving it completely. And by the end of it, they're getting like a big benefit or a big result. Right. So you have to think about it in terms of that, not just in terms of like what you're doing for the client, website development, copywriting, whatever, but like what problem are we solving? How are we solving it? Are we solving it fully? And what is the end result they're getting, right? Um, so you have to really just think about offers differently that it's it's actually like the, the whole package, right? It's the whole thing. And this really ties in a niche, right? Because if you want to make an offer that converts, 
you have to know the niche, right? Because if you're serving all these different markets, it's really hard to make an offer that's so attractive and so different because you, you're just trying to serve everyone, right? And you're, not, you're never creating that one perfect thing for that one perfect person. So that's why it all ties in together because when you focus on one niche, all you gotta do is just talk to a lot of those people, ask them what their biggest problems are, what their biggest frustrations are in their business, uh, find out what really they want, what their desires are, what they're trying, where they're trying to get to with their business, right? And then the offer will be obvious, right? You'll see like, okay, they keep telling me they have this problem and it's really expensive problem to have, they need to solve it. And this is why they wanna solve this problem. This is what they want, right? And okay, cool, this is how I'm gonna solve it for them through this issue or this. So um, you don't need to just sit there in your basement or your room and like just brainstorm like you know a million dollar offer. You just need to go actually talk to your clients and talk. the more you talk to them, the more that they'll just tell you what they need and you can just build your offer around that. So I like to think about offer creation as a collaborative process, like you do it with your target market. It's not just you sitting there thinking about all of these crazy ideas in your head. Because at the end of the day, you're not your target market, right? So how do you really know exactly intimately what they need? Um, so I'm a big fan of just interacting with the market. You know, every sales call you take is an opportunity for you to make your offer better because you can hear from people, what do they like? What do they ask you about? Like, why did they buy? Why didn't they buy? And if you had clients already, you can go back to your past clients and just do customer interviews, right? They will give you like gold, like gold nuggets that will help you make your offer better, right? Ask them things like, why did you buy from us? What problem were you hoping to solve? Why did you need to solve that problem, right? Um, you know, why didn't you buy from us or why did you almost not buy from us? Like see what objections they were having, right? And all of that can be used to make your offer better. Um, but yeah, the key is you have to really understand that an offer is it's got to solve a big problem. It's got to provide a big result and it's got to really be like a full solution to that, right? Um, so yeah. if your offer isn't one of those things you got to look at, you know, which one of those three it could be. And if you're, if you're not sure, just talk to more people in your market and you'll you'll figure it out. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very curious to hear what are some of the best offers you've heard of? and some of the worst ones, if you can list maybe like a few that you, on top of your head um, that maybe you can share with you, because we see all the time in the group, like, like how, how can I like, yeah, what are the best offers like in it for, I don't know, for e-commerce or like sometimes people are just trying to get like the best results. So maybe like you can give insights to people, like maybe the worst ones that you have seen and that people should not attempt to do those ones. Um, same with niches, like what are some of the worst niches? Maybe I can start. So for example, yeah. Um, for for like the worst ones I think I've seen are um, e-commerce um, and SEO. Yeah, I think SEO for e-commerce and targeting um, small business owners probably. Yeah, I think that one is so saturated, and then you're you're also offering something that is just so. It's just you are combining niches and offers that are already used both very saturated. So just getting results there is going to be very difficult. So um, yeah, I, yeah, are there any that you also would like to share? I mean, yeah, those are those are great examples for sure, right? Um, to start with, like if you're, and e-commerce is a great niche, but if you're just doing what everyone else does, which is offer them Facebook ads, Google ads, you'll be one of a million people to reach out to them that morning, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if you could work with e-commerce, but offer them something different, like maybe, conversion rate optimization, right? Or maybe like 30 TikTok reels a month or something unique for them, right? Or maybe help them get into wholesale or retail, something that other people aren't doing so much, right? So if you're in a competitive market, it's okay as long as you're doing something different, like you have a different angle into it, right? Um, yeah. And then yeah, small businesses, like if they're really small, it's everything's gonna be difficult in your life if you're selling to like really tiny local businesses because there's only so much they can, they can pay you, right? And you think you need to be just better like sales, but it's like, no, you need to, Talk to businesses that have more money, right? So, um, yeah. definitely yeah. agree with you on those. Um, what are you saying? No, no, it, it makes a lot of sense. Like, I'm, I'm also trying to look at it from the other side. Like, whenever I get a message or an email, like I do get like every now and then also like emails, like I don't know, like someone offering to integrate with us, right? I'd instantly like, and and then people are like, um, we build this tool, we're brand new to the market, and obviously. If we're going to recommend a new tool, we need to make sure that they are like good, that they have good results. Um, but they just pitch the product. It's, it's just a hard pitch um, most yeah. of the time. And then you have those exceptions, um, which is, um, I think, like you said, like they just come, like they, they really try to understand what we do. Um, and so it's hard to tell sometimes if it's a mass email or not. But at least yeah. the way the email resonates, it just, the, the the way they they craft the email, I feel completely identified 
with uh, the problem solutions that they're addressing in the email. But I think more importantly, um, and once again, we're going back to what we were just talking. They are offering a lot of value, so they're not asking a lot from me. They're not like on the first call, like on the first email, let's let's have a call. But it, yeah. it's, it's more like rather like, could you tell me like, like what are you currently doing right now just to see if, um, you know, we can be of any help here? Or for example, yeah. here is a sample of X. Um, do you think like this could make any sense? Or here is some data for you to review. And um, what do you think of this? So they, they're making it very easy for me to give a yes or no answer, but also they are facilitating for me the decision making process, like rather than, um, you know, like start, like rather than having to wonder, like, is this like worth it or not? Like they just make it super easy from the very beginning. And same thing like with, um, you know, when, when I have seen some other offers in the group um, or niches, um, what I've noticed that the ones that resonate the most are those that, like you said, like rather than saying we offer Facebook ads, um, they will go super niche. They will go like, um, you, you know, like we, we help this specific segment, this specific group of people get um, the hole in the wall rather than we're going to sell you the hammer like or, or the drill. Like this, this yeah. is the drill. This is what we sell. This is the drill. Rather than like we can help this specific group of people get that job done. Um, so, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, well, you see it. I think it's like you said earlier, it's a great example. Just look at your own email inbox. It's the what cold emails you get that don't interest you and what are the ones that do. So I use actually uh, like Gmail labels. So every time I get a good cold email, I put it in this good cold mm -hmm. email folder. And nice. then I have a crappy cold email folder and then I have like an okay one. And then sometimes if I just need inspiration, I'll just go look at like the good ones and it gives me new ideas. Um, nice. But that, that's the best way you can learn marketing is pay attention to like yourself as a consumer and what interests you and then like stop and ask yourself why. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, everyone, most people just pitch their product. They ask for 60 minutes, you know, let's hop on a call. Hop on a call for what, right? Like make it easier for them. Tell them like, oh, I just want this from you first or ask a question, start a conversation. So when I'm hearing you share that example about people hit you up and they just ask for a call without offering any value first, it's like they're just trying to rush through all these steps, right? Rather than just first step is just like, ask a good question or offer you something small or just, you know, yeah. make it easy to say yes, right? That's the best thing. It's just your offer should be easy to say yes to. I'm a huge fan of using lead magnets and emails. Yeah. I think um, everyone here listening should really focus on like simple, soft call to actions yeah. or a lead magnet. Like if you're any kind of agency, offer people a free analysis, a free audit, a free plan. Um, back to when you asked before, what offers work, have I seen work really well? One of my clients, um, uh, one of my clients has an SEO agency, which is a really competitive niche, but he's crushing it right now. Uh, actually, he's one of our pretty much our most successful client right now. He's getting one new deal a day. So one oh, wow. new client a day for his agency, all from cold email, all from instantly. And uh, what the big shift for him was he's offering people a free SEO workshop and a free SEO audit. So instead of saying, hey, let's hop on a call, he's saying, I'm going to give you a free workshop, right, that other people would pay money for or a free SEO audit, right? And it's absolutely crushing because it's easy for someone to say yes to you. It's different. So that's how you can even be in a competitive market, but still stand out with a more attractive offer. Uh, yeah. And obviously if someone goes to a workshop with you for free or they spend an hour, it's virtual, right? So they spend an hour like doing a workshop with you, then they're going to be such, it's going to be so easy to ask them like, Hey, are you interested in actually SEO? Because obviously they wouldn't be there if they weren't. And if they spend an hour with you, they have so much trust with you. Yeah. Now they see you as like a friend. Um, so it'd be really easy to have another call and then, you know, pitch them your offer. So, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely get creative with that. Yeah, I think I think that's a very good point because a lot of people they they don't realize that, especially like the higher the ticket or the high the more expensive the service, the more trust you need to generate with that person because they're gonna be investing a lot of hard earned money with you. But at the same time, um, you can sort of like accelerate the process by doing exactly what you said like you create those instances for them to start trusting you more like workshops and stuff like that and you're going to really qualify them like that at the same time because like you said if someone stays for a full hour in a workshop and, and it, it definitely shows that they're interested obviously they yeah. still need to be like you know just com completely sure that it's the right call to do um and there will obviously be some negotiation to do in terms of pricing and so on but you have done the most difficult part, which is creating the trust. Um, so yeah, I, I completely agree with you. That's a fantastic way of generating leads. But also, um, I was the other day uh, reading some analysis on um, 
how long does it take to close a sale depending on the industry depending on um uh, who you're speaking to and, and th there are a lot of factors and one thing that surprised me a lot is that inbound leads um have more or less like half the time uh converting than outbound so um i think a lot of people they need to realize that if you're going to be doing outbound which is also essential you know you, you cannot just live out of inbound and the other way around you if you're just doing outbound you, yeah. you need to in a way do inbound and the beauty i think of call email is that those outbound emails that you're sending will generate inbound eventually either because people will forward those emails or 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 that people will come back eventually at some point and fill your form so it, it will generate the inbound eventually but um, long story short the the whole um the whole logic behind this is that whenever you are doing outbound you need to always embrace the idea that you have to do multiple touch points even though they say they're interested um because it's not just like they replied and the sale is closed like you will need a, a like weeks sometimes if not months in order to close the sale maybe you're lucky and you could close it in a couple of days or in the same day or in the call itself but those are rare occasions and yeah you will just need multiple touch points and create trust so it yeah really makes yeah i love that yeah i think it makes perfect sense that the inbounds are faster to close because if someone's coming to you inbound they've already went through a lot of that buyer's journey right whereas if you're outbounding someone cold emailing them and it's the first time they thought of that idea they still have all that time to really like go through that buyer's journey and, and really explore the problem explore the solution um so yeah definitely with lead management you can kind of speed that up and just build a lot of trust uh, really yeah. quick for them Maybe we can answer some of the community questions. So this question from a Facebook community member. Um, by the way, if you haven't joined our Facebook community, it's the largest call email community out there, call email masterclass by instantly on Facebook. So the question is, can you tell me how can I write the best email for investors to offer e-com services? So this is a bit specific. So feel free to like give uh, any like broad advice if you want, or if you feel like you can comfortably answer this one, like, yeah, feel free to do so, but yeah. Yeah, so um, I'm not so sure I understand the offer. It says I write the best email for investors to offer e-com services. Uh, but we can definitely talk about some general tips just for writing a really good cold email because I think the principles apply no matter what niche you're in, right? Yeah. Um, so we talked about a few earlier, right? You know, three to five sentences. Keep it really, really short. Um, keep it short, you know, short and sweet because people are reading these on mobile and they want to just get to the point like really, really quick, right? Um, so keep it short and sweet. Get to the get to the benefits of the person in the first few sentences, right? Like within 10 seconds of reading it, they should be able to say like, okay, what's in it for me? Here's the benefit. Here's why I should keep keep uh, reading, right? Um, so back to the example before, people are emailing you about integrating with Instantly. If they get to a benefit real quick, like, hey, Felipe, I noticed a lot of your users, you know, want this feature, but, you know, you guys don't have it. And I can, you know, we, we, can, we can definitely partner on this. Like, get to the benefit real quick. That would be much better than like, hey, let's hop on a call, right? Yeah. So yeah, make sure within the first couple of sentences you're getting right to the value of, as far as what's in it for them. Why should they care? Why should they? Why should they want to talk to you? Right? Short and sweet. Get to the benefit real quick. Um, definitely try to have an offer that you know have an offer that's attractive. You can try to lead nine at first. It's going to be much easier for someone to say yes to a free thing rather than you know like just go ahead and buy your service or hop on a, a long call for you know with no with no clear value from it. Right? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I'd say like a two thing, you know, two things that should be on every single cold email is the problem you solve and, you know, the results or the benefit of solving that problem, right? So, yeah, those two things that you, you need, you need them, right? You need to explain, here's a problem you have or a problem that you might have that I solve. And here's, you know, other people have solved before they've achieved this result, right? Like no matter what you're selling, you really need to have those because people are only going to really want to be with you if they know that they're having a problem that you, you know, you can help them overcome. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I think also, so for example, for this specific use case, but also I think people can do it for other use cases. Um, you need to pretty much understand who you're talking to. So for example, in this case, investors. Um, so if you think about it, the moment someone thinks of an investor, someone is thinking of someone with money and people with money are constantly being bombarded. Um, yeah. So the moment, the moment you're screaming, I'm making money or I have this much money, they're going to be pitched left and right all the time. Yeah. So how do you stand out? I think that's the number one factor you need to consider. How do I stand out out of the hundreds of emails that this person is receiving daily? From the subject line, I need to make sure it's the most appealing subject line I've seen. I think 
quick question is not going to cut it. Um, you're definitely, if you go for the standard subject lines, you're not going to get the right results. If you're targeting investors, it needs to be something sort of super specific to them. Like, I don't know, like you can even go for something ballsy, like meeting two dots, their name, your name, like maybe you can copy the Calendly, like you can use the same subject line as a Calendly link. So they think that someone book a Calendly event on their own calendar or they book one and then they will open the email thinking like, hey, I didn't book anything or maybe someone booked a meeting with me using my Calendly link. Yeah, try um, to get creative with it for sure. Yeah, you can get creative with that one. So with the subject, I think the next one is with the cup itself, it's just like you said, super short and sweet, sharp. Um, Obviously, provide like immediately on the first line, just provide a lot of value. Um, and why why will it be interesting for them? Like even from the first line, like if you start pitching your product or service on the first line, you're done. Like I think the person will just skim through and and just skip. Um, but yeah, you like investors, highly busy, very yeah, just they're just all the time being bombarded. So and they're very picky with their emails. So um yeah it's standing out i think that's that's the word right here so yeah definitely all, all really good tips yeah and that's why we were talking earlier about you know look at cold emails you get that's how you can see how to stand out right if you look at all the cold emails you'll get you'll see the same things everyone says right the same templates the same you know kind of style the same subject lines so all you got to do is look at the stuff that you get every day and then just do something different right yeah. and then have that pattern interrupt yeah that makes a lot of sense so there are some other questions, none of them yet, I think, um, like really relevant. So we're just going to wait for a few more questions that maybe we can answer here because I think we already covered like a few of them. Um, but how about you also tell people about things that you see um, are going to be changing this year? Because obviously every year called email changes. Um, what do you feel like it's going to be new this year and people should work on? um like uh, are there like because i a lot of people think like i mean every single year we hear the same cold email is dead but i've I heard that for the past 10 years i've been doing cold email yeah. uh and and, yeah, and I, I guess calling is there for those who don't adapt or improve their process but what is is what is that one thing that you think people should work on in 2024 yeah i think the biggest shift um i predict and i've already seen really with you know my clients that i help with this is just just shifting away from going for this like buy 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 you know let's book a call model right because by now like prospects have been getting emailed for years and years with that right and it's happening more and more and more so you have to really just be creative and offer value up front give free value up front give a lead back give something your competitors charge for right uh, and i think that's the biggest shift i see i'm seeing already that's really working and it's i feel it's just going to keep going that direction right because at the end of the day like Buyers are becoming more, you know, self-guided through the sales process, right? You know, business pe people are with all, with all the information we have and the internet and social media, people are now more like, like when I buy things, when I buy like an online course or something, uh, usually I'll, I'll look up influencers, I'll watch their content on YouTube. And then when I'm ready to buy, I'll reach out and like buy their course or join their coaching program or something like that, right? And yeah. a lot of people, when they join my coaching program, work with me, it's the same thing. They might've been following me for a year. So I feel like more and more people are going to be self-guiding themselves through the sales process, right? And really just looking to work with who they trust. Um, you know, again, maybe five, 10 years ago, any niche you could just say, hey, I'm after this, do you want it and book a call? But that, I feel like that's just going to work less and less. And you need to now offer value up front because, you know, buyers need to be kind of impressed and receive some kind of value from you first. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think this is aligned with like some of the questions we're seeing now. I think it doesn't harm to just ask this again even though like we we have already mentioned it but um it, it's just good to keep keep re uh, remembering people this so this uh user is asking jack john what should be, what should be the first uh, yeah what should be the first what should the first email have in it um should there be a link to a website or should it just be me introducing myself i don't think neither but yeah what do you think about that aj yeah. So basically think about the goal of your email. The goal of your email is to get someone to reply to you. You just want someone to reply and say, tell me more. And then you can reply back, talk to them a bit and invite them to a call. Right. 
But the goal of the email is not to drive traffic, right? When you're not trying to drive traffic to a website. Hmm. You just want someone to reply to you, right? Because then once you're having a conversation, it's easier to invite them to the next step. Um, so your first email should end off with something like, hey, are you having this problem? Or hey, do you want more info? Or hey, can I do this for you? Can I give you this, right? Always end with a question on a statement rather than a link to a website or just introducing yourself. Um, so first email, I mean, just ask them if they have the problem that you solve, tell them how you solve it, and ask them if they want to learn more. Like as simple as that, and that's going to always be a good formula for the first email. Uh, but always make sure you end with a question that they can they can answer so that they have a reason to reply back. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I completely agree. Keep it short and sweet and keep it and make sure the email is about them, not about you. Because I feel like in Jack, I think what you're suggesting here is like, should I talk about should I talk about my business or should I talk about myself? Yes. But you should it's neither. Like you shouldn't talk about you at all. You should talk about them. It's always about the, the other person on the other side. And how does your business impact them positively? How can you how can you deliver value to them? And and and, and once again, we're not talking about like a pitch, we're talking about like how can you today, like as of right now, help them for free, ideally? Like what can you do right now to help them so you earn their trust and they can very easily say yes. Like for example, free it is, or it is a guide that can do X for you. Whatever it is that can deliver value today, right now, that that's what it's gonna be worth. A website, it's not gonna cut it. No one cares about introducing yourself. Like no one cares about that, to be honest. And I think we have to yeah. be very straightforward about that. So, yeah, people have no time, to be honest, unfortunately. But, yeah, that's a great one. So, yeah, I think we have dissected the three main parts um, of um, your strategy. Is there anything else that you would like to add that you think people could benefit from? No, I think we covered a lot, man. It's really great, really great conversation. Um, but, yeah, really just understand the importance of specializing, right? The niche, have an attractive offer, and really get clear on, on the messaging and you know why your prospects should care, right? Um, if you do those things, then you know you'll be able to have success in whatever business you're in because that's really you know the the the, the essence of, of any business and a, and a cold email campaign is those three things. So for anyone watching, next time you're trying to analyze your cold email campaign, understand like why it didn't work, how could it done better, you know, really think about those three things, right? Because that's really kind of the underlying factors. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Well, Jay, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for all of your questions. Also, uh, guys, um, how can people reach out to you, Jay? Um, do you have a, a website or an email in case people have further questions? Yeah, happy to connect with anyone listening. Um, I'm definitely in your Facebook group as well, uh, an instantly Facebook group, which all of you guys should get in. Uh, but if you want to connect with me personally, you can just add me on Facebook, uh, AJ Casada, LinkedIn as well, AJ Casada. Same name is here in the chat, and then also Instagram. And I also have a Facebook community as well called B2B Sales and Marketing Secrets, where we talk about cold email and also other aspects of you know building scaling agencies. So happy to join in there as well and, and chat more. Amazing. Well, thank you once again, Jay. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you in the next one. It will be fun to um, have another one next year, maybe, or maybe a bit before. But like when you yeah. tell me, yeah, we double or triple once again our clientele. So that would be fantastic. Yeah, that's the plan, man. Definitely. Well, thanks for having me back, man. Always enjoy our conversations on the show. Yeah, likewise. We'll see you soon. See ya.